kicking off then, you mentioned that you found it more difficult than you thought to get a training contract. Just how competitive yeah. is it at the moment to get a training contract? What sort of numbers uh, are we looking at? Well, in a word, it's very, very competitive to get a training contract. Securing a training contract isn't easy simply because demand outstrips supply, demand far outstrips supply. So as you said, if you take a look at the numbers and you add up all the people who are eligible to apply for training contracts in any given year, you've got about 34,000 law students. You've got people at university not studying law who want to convert. You've got about 3,700 people already studying the GDL, which is the conversion course to law. You've got around 7,000 LPC students. You've got foreign students. You've got people looking to change career and enter the legal profession. So if you toss all of that up, you're going to arrive at about 45,000 people. Wow. And that's the number of people who, yeah, exactly, in one year alone, make up the pool of candidates who are eligible to apply for training contracts. So you've got to think about, added to that, you've got many, many candidates from previous years who didn't secure a training contract because it's so competitive, who will roll over, if you like, and remain in the pool. And they might stay there for three, four, five years while they try each year to get a training contract. So you've got this really, I mean, it's incalculable, really, but vast figure. And pit that against the really small number of training contracts that are registered each year is about 5,400. And you can see how competitive it is. And especially for the London firms, because they attract the most applicants. So a lot of that 5,400 figure is going to be people, you know, training contracts at small firms pitted all over the country. But if you're applying for a London firm, your competition is still more fierce. Yeah. And if you're going for one of the Magic Circle firms, then it's, um, yeah, it does get very, uh, the numbers start <laughs> getting uh, getting large very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Yeah, no, for sure. So if we think then, um, it, so we, we know it's, it's a difficult challenge you're setting yourself. What are the um, the requirements that you'd be looking for from a grade perspective? I mean, if you've got a mm. two one or below, um, you know, if you've got a two two, is it even worth applying, or, or do you need a? Do firms often stipulate a minimum of a two one or above? Well, I think that that question really, if you break it down, there's sort of two strands going on. So. You need to think in terms of grade requirements, what the SRA require. So that's sorry, that's the Solicitor's Regulation Authority, which is our regulating body. And secondly, what do the firms I'm applying to require? And those things will be different. So the Solicitor's Regulation Authority is planning a huge overhaul of the system from 2020. And even now, they're still refining the proposals as to what the new qualifying regime is going to look like. But broadly speaking, um, they're going to require you from 2020 to have a degree in any subject. It doesn't have to be law. And they've said all equivalent qualifications. So we should get more details on that as the proposals are firmed up over time. Um, so that's the SRA aspect of it. Secondly, then you need to be thinking about what grades the firms will require you to have. And the general consensus is that law firms aren't going to suddenly radically change their grade requirements from what they are now when the overhaul comes into play in about 2020. And obviously, different firms will have different academic requirements. So if you're applying to a high street firm, you may be able to get away with, say, three Bs at, at A level. But if you're applying to, you mentioned the Magic Circle firms, if you're applying to one of them, three Bs and a 2-2 two -two isn't going to cut it. I mean, usually, you're going to be looking at at least a 2-1, at university and AAB or higher at A level, and they will definitely look at your A level results and they will definitely look at your GCSE results. And on top of that, they will look at every single exam result that you've um, you've taken at university, and that includes first year grades that won't count or generally don't count towards your final mark. So just beware of that in case you're thinking about going out before any oh, wow. first year exam. <laughs> 